There are a lot of people who love GTA 4 and the community made script mods for it, but some of them aren't quite sure how to install these mods. So in this video I will be focusing on showing you how to install script mods in GTA 4 and explaining the differences between them. Before we begin, you should know that for any script mod to even function, you will need an ASI loader. I will leave a link to a good one in the video description. Now let's begin. ASI mods are made with the programming language C++. Due to C++ being a very powerful language, a lot can be done with them. The possibilities are endless really. ASI mods usually sit in your game's root directory, where the gta4.exe file is located. This is where all ASI loaders detect and load them into your game. Some ASI loaders also allow you to put your ASI mods in the plugins folder, for example, to make your main directory look cleaner. As of now, there are two different types of ASI mods. The first type of ASI mods are the ones built using Scriptook, and the second ones are those made using IVSDK. In summary, both Scriptook and IVSDK are tools for developers to create ASI mods for GTA 4, where IVSDK is the most recent out of these two, and also a lot more powerful. While IVSDK has no additional dependencies on its own, Scriptook ASI mods always ship with a Scriptook.dll file, as those mods depend on it. If you are wondering if you can differentiate between Scriptook and IVSDK mods, you can't. Except if you download a mod which includes a Scriptook.dll file, then you can be sure it's a Scriptook mod. .NET mods are usually made with either the programming language C Sharp or Visual Basic. While C Sharp and especially Visual Basic are not as powerful as C++, they can still be used to create some really great stuff as they are easy to work with. Depending on the type, .NET mods usually have a specific folder they need to be put into in order for them to be loaded. Unlike ASI mods, .NET mods can be reloaded mid-game without needing to restart. This makes them an excellent choice not only for mod enjoyers but also for developers as they can quickly test and adjust their code. As of now, there are two different types of .NET mods. The first one being .NET mods which are made using scripthook.net and the second one being those that are made using ivsdk.net. Sounds kind of familiar, right? Both scripthook.net and ivsdk.net are made using the ASI counterpart. They allow developers to create mods not in C++ but in either language of the .NET family, which is C Sharp, F Sharp or Visual Basic. This time, there are not only tools for developers to create mods with, but they are also responsible for loading and managing .NET mods. They can also be differentiated this time, script.net mods end with the file extension .net.dll, and ivsdk.net mods end with .ivsdk.dll. So now we have talked about what ASI and .NET mods are, and what kind of differences there are between them. Before I show you the installation process of these mods, please note that if a mod includes a readme file, you should read it first as the mod may have special requirements or want you to put certain things in different locations. Ok, so we're starting off by showing you how to install ZMenu IV, as this mod has so much stuff in it, it could confuse some people. Alright, there's a readme file in here, let's read it. So the readme file says that we just need to put everything in our game's root directory. And if we want the parachute from the Battle of Gay Tony to work in base GTA 4, we just need to put the content from within the parachute support folder in the game's root directory too. As we learned, ASI mods typically get placed in the game's root directory. Sadly, the readme does not tell us what this modified playgta4.exe is doing, so I will not put this in my game's root directory. One important thing to mention, if you see files which only have a .dll extension, those are very likely mod dependencies and those always go in the game's root directory if not told otherwise. Let's install two mods, Arrest Warrant and Project Thunder. As we learned with .NET mods, they typically get placed within a special directory depending on their type, so they get loaded. Let's start installing Arrest Warrant. Here we can see the .NET.dll extension. This is a scriptural .NET mod and needs to be put in the scripts folder which should be in the game's root directory if we have script.net installed. For the other two files, let's read the readme to see where we need to put them. Ok, so it says we need to put them in our scripts folder too. Alright, that's easy enough. Next we are going to install Project Thunder. Oh hey, another readme, let's read it. According to the readme, we just need to put all the files within the files for the main directory folder into our game's root directory. It also wants us to modify some files using OpenIV, which is a modding tool. But in this tutorial, I'm only gonna focus on the pure script installation. So if you want a tutorial on that, then write a comment down below. 
This mod makes it pretty simple to install a script. So where do ivsdk.net scripts actually need to be placed? ivsdk.net script mods, which have the .ivsdk.dll extension, need to be placed in the scripts folder, which is located within the ivsdk.net directory, which should be found within the game's root directory if you have ivsdk.net installed. So now that we have successfully installed one ASI mod, one script.net mod and one ivsdk.net mod, it's time for some additional notes. If you happen to get in a situation where you download a script mod which has no readme file and no proper folder structure, so you're not sure how to install it, then remember to always check the file extension. If it's an ASI mod, then try putting everything in the game's root directory. If it's a .NET mod, check the type and put everything in the corresponding scripts folder. I hope I could help some people with this video. If I missed something which would have been worth talking about, let me know so I can make a follow up video on it.